So there's one thing that we can all agree on. There's an abundance of fitness information out there. And because of this, the issue is no longer the lack of information. The problem now has become, how do you distinguish between what's good information and what's nonsense? And that's why in this video, I wanna share with you a couple of things that fitness influencers never talk about. And because they never talk about it, this causes a lot of false expectations, especially for beginners. And this video will share the truth and the reality that you need to know. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing you need to know that fitness influencers never talk about is just how much difference posing, lighting, angles, and getting a pump make when it comes to their photos and videos. And when you look at their photos and videos, it may seem like it's normal, it's casual, doesn't require much effort, it's very spontaneous, but it's actually the exact opposite in the back end. Most of the photos you see out there are perfectly engineered with lots of effort to present their physique in a certain way. And let's not forget that bodybuilding and physique sports are about presentation. It's show, it's not real reality. Everybody's trying to hide their weaknesses and show off their strengths. Unfortunately, beginners, not knowing this, they're going to see that photo and they're going to compare that to their own photo they're just casually taken at the gym. And of course, they end up being very disappointed. And a great example of this is when I get photos from guys who are clearly at 10% body fat, maybe even lower, asking me, Mario, what's wrong with my physique? I can't see my abs without flexing. And there's nothing wrong with their physique. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Even at 8% body fat, when there's hardly any body fat left in the midsection, I still can't see my six pack without flexing properly. That's normal. And if you don't think that's normal, if you have these false expectations, you might be thinking, wow, I'm still fat. I need to diet more, I need to cut more calories. I need to add more cardio. And you're moving further and further away from the truth down the wrong path. And if you wanna learn more about how much goes into this, I would even recommend scheduling a photo shoot. I've done several of those. It really teaches you so much about how a photographer with a simple change of an angle or different lenses, focal lengths, suddenly adds 10, 15 pounds of muscle on you, make you look lean or completely transform your body. And once you've gone through these experiences, you start developing a content immune system where when you're looking at stuff on social media, you see what it's really about, you don't let it affect you as much, you're not comparing yourself to it, and you go back to what's really important and what this journey is ultimately about, and that's about beating your previous self, becoming the best version of yourself through effort, and consistency over time. Now, the second thing fitness influencers usually fail to mention is how they train to build their physique versus how they're training currently. A lot of the influencers that you see have a well-developed physique. They got there using time-tested muscle building principles. They focused on compound lifts, free weights, dumbbells, barbells. They progressively overloaded in the six to 15 rep range. They've actually managed their fatigue. They've had enough protein. They've actually done a good job. They focused on intensity, volume, all that good stuff. However, if you look at their content right now, they're talking about chasing the pump, they're talking about mixing things up every week, they're using weird variations, they're reinventing new exercises, and that's not how they've built their physique. And they can get away with that because they already have that solid base of muscle and muscle is a lot easier to maintain than it is to gain. And of course, there's this whole component of quote unquote vitamin S, which you always have to mention when we're talking about fitness influencers. And unfortunately, I do see a lot of beginners who are focusing on chasing the pump, who are trying to quote unquote connect with the muscle. And even worse than that, they're not hitting the like button on my videos, which is terrible. And on top of that, they're getting distracted from mastering the key lifts, which we know work. Think about this from the Lindy effect perspective. If there are certain exercises that have been around for a very long time, it's very likely that these exercises are gonna be around for even longer. And the reason for that is because they work. They didn't just work for me. They're not just gonna work for you, but they work for tens of thousands of other lifters. So don't let yourself get distracted. Use these movements as a part of your training program. Focus on them to build your foundation of strength and muscle. Now that we talked about the training side of things, it's very important that we address the diet. A lot of fitness influencers have balked in the past. They've gained quite a lot of body fat. They've allowed themselves to do that, to gain strength and muscle. And now they're only talking about bulking as a mistake, only in that negative context. And they're mentioning how when you get ripped, you just stay ripped and build muscle at that low body fat percentage, which is very dangerous advice when it's taken out of context, especially for beginners and intermediates. Don't get me wrong. I'm not an advocate of dirty bulking and putting on 50 pounds, but some weight gain and some body fat percentage increase 
is necessary and normal when you're looking to gain muscle. I personally fluctuate around 15 pounds from my lowest to my heaviest weight on top of my lean bulk. And this allows for about one year of gaining. Once I hit that top, I do a fat loss phase again, I remove the body fat, see how much muscle I have left, then I go back into lean bulking. My goal is to lean bulk as long and as much as possible because as a natural lifter, one of the most powerful things you can do to build muscle is to be in that caloric surplus. And unfortunately, I do see a lot of beginners and intermediates who have lost body weight now get paranoid about gaining any body weight whatsoever. And then they hear the story, they can just stay where they are and they can just put on a ton of muscle and they fully buy into it because it confirms their existing beliefs and, and paranoias and so they don't wanna actually change and they wanna face that fear. And this leads them to be stuck, making very little progress or no progress at all. And I'm telling you, you will ultimately have to face that fear and you will have to learn how to lean bulk properly to really maximize muscle growth. And aside from discussing diet and training, we also have to remember that social media in general is a great example of a survivorship bias. A lot of people are getting results despite their programs and not because of their programs. And at the end of the day, for every one person that's seeing results with those diet gimmicks and training hacks, there are tens of thousands of people out there who do the exact same thing and they don't see any results whatsoever. And we also have to remember their selection. People who are more successful, they're more likely to share that success because they're proud of their results. And this can really create that illusion where it seems like everybody's succeeding but you. And if you fall into the comparison trap, it may feel like you're just a complete failure. And when I look at my own journey in social media, I'm seeing guys who are deadlifting five, 600 pounds, they're squatting four, 500 pounds, they're benching, 350, 400 pounds for reps, and I'm nowhere near those numbers. It took me 11 years to be able to bench press three plates for a set of three. I see guys get there in three, four, five years. And if I fall for the comparison, it's gonna be a distraction. Instead, I remember how far I've come. In the first month of training, I did 90 pounds, 40 kilos, for five reps, sloppy five reps. I could barely do 15 push-ups with good form when I first started out. And that's important, that I've made progress year by year, and that's what you wanna focus on. Not who's natty and not who's taking what, who's training how, some random stuff. It's you versus you, actions that you can control, behaviors, day-to-day -day things, making sure fundamentals are in place, making sure you're practicing mastery, and then we look back at 12 months of a year that there are stuff that you're proud of both in fitness and in life overall. And that's what you do year by year. And that's how you maximize your results over time and also build a life and a physique that you're proud of. What's gonna help you with that is making sure you hit that subscribe button below and the notifications by hitting the bell icon. Details for coaching on the description below. Also check out this video that I'm gonna leave here. It's gonna help you a lot and I'm gonna see you right there.